So what's the project today? Self-irrigating planters or SIP beds. Stand by. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mrs. Rattlecan's house. I'm James and today we're going to talk about SIP beds or self-irrigating planters. My wife, after 30 years of service to the United States Air Force, is retiring and she wants to garden. So we've made a bunch of discussions, we've made a bunch of plans, and one of those plans is we're going to build a series of four self-irrigating planter beds. This is the prototype and uh, we're going to talk about what you need to make these. It's pretty easy to do. The aim of this project is not uh, to spend scads and scads of time in the shop. The aim of the project is to get these built and get these in the ground. So these are made with western red cedar. These are 1 by 10s. The bed is 6 feet long. The bed is 3 feet wide. Um, and the corners are inch and a half uh, by eight inch uh, angle, just angle iron. We could talk about the complex joinery that is involved in this project, except that there is no complex joinery involved in this project. I, I've kept it simple on purpose. I've attached them from the inside just so that you, you're only going to see the cedar on the outside. We've left the cedar unfinished. It's going to do its thing turn gray over ages you know you, you buy cedar because it's rot resistant you certainly don't buy it because it's cheap there's two screws per board and i have used number eight three quarter inch long screws uh, they're actually they're actually machine screws uh, that i've used and uh, the angle iron is just thick enough so that they're not they don't protrude so you have a nice smooth uh, appearance on the outside so what is a, uh, what's a SIP bed? What's a SIP planter all about? It's a way to reduce the amount of maintenance that you have to do as far as watering is involved. You'll notice at the bottom of this, I have a number of pieces of four inch corrugated slit drainage pipe. And each one of these pipes has the end capped with just some landscape fabric and some tape and uh, this bed holds about 50 feet of irrigation tubing. And the reason that I do that is because I'm making an irrigation reservoir in the bottom. I've covered the inside of this box with four mil plastic. We're gonna try it with this only because I don't wanna spend $63 on a pond liner. If it works, great. If it doesn't, then we're not out a whole lot. I use this white tube in the upper left hand corner to fill the reservoir. I have a drain hole, we'll show you that later. And then we're gonna cover this with potting mix. We're not using topsoil on this. Think of it as like a giant hanging basket, except it's stuck into the ground. And as the plants need water, They'll pull the water up from uh, the reservoir, distribute it evenly throughout uh, the entire bed, and then it makes it just easier. Now, why are these why are these beds so tall? Because my wife wanted them that tall. It's going to be much easier on her back these to do these beds because these beds are 27, 28 inches tall. So let's talk about how we make them. I designed this so that you only had to cut two sizes of wood. You cut a six foot piece of cedar and you cut a three foot piece of cedar. That's all the cutting that you do. So if you, if you are able to, I was able to buy mine in 12 foot boards. They just dropped it off here in the driveway and then you use the chop saw cut a bunch of six foots, and then you cut a bunch of three foots. 
the problem with buying something 12 foot long is you gotta transport it or you gotta pay somebody to transport it for you. Depending on your area, it could be 75 to 125 bucks for somebody to back a truck up into your driveway and drop it off. So for the corners, uh, I am using a 36 inch long piece of inch and a half by eighth angle iron. And the reason that I do that is I have enough length to stack three one by tens, which is actually nine and some change because it's dimensioned lumber. But then I have this little leftover piece at the bottom and then I can hammer that into the ground and then my box doesn't go anywhere. Um, so again, I was, I called my metal supplier and they cut them into actually six foot lengths and I brought them over, put them on the chop saw, cut those in half. Uh, if, you can, if you can do little tricks like that, it'll save you a little bit of money and it'll also help you justify <laughs> the shop full of tools uh, that you have. And then for fasteners, I'm just using a number eight, three quarter inch uh, pan screw. We can, we can sit here and argue all day long about whether it's the correct fastener to use or not. That's not really the point. The point is, uh, we're all big boys and girls. I'm showing you how I did it. There's a lot of you out there that are smarter than I am and you're gonna do it a different way and that's fine. You know, we're just showing you the way that we did it uh, because this whole thing is an experiment and is it gonna work? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, but if it doesn't, then, you know, we'll, we'll learn from it and we'll, we'll carry on. Life's too short to have regrets. Life's too short to get bent out of shape about stuff. You just kind of carry on and, and you learn from it. So a couple other things that we're going to be using for our uh, reservoir we're going to just there's a, just a, a piece of four inch corrugated slit drainage pipe it's going to come in a big a big roll um, check with you know your local box store mine comes in hundred foot rolls um, that are fairly easy to maneuver around we also have some uh, smaller three inch or three and a half inch drain um, that already has what we call a silt sock on top of it. And that's just left over from another project. There, there's no reason to go out and buy, pay the extra expense on that. Then there's my roll of um, a vapor barrier. Again, we are, it's an experiment for us. We're gonna try it using this. This is only a four mil uh, vapor barrier. We are putting uh, hardware cloth uh, on the bottom of our beds and part of that is because we have critters around here. We have moles uh, We also have more importantly we have ground squirrels If you have been following the channel for any point of time a couple of years ago ground squirrels disabled my super duty pickup truck by chewing through the fuel line, so uh, we're gonna use the the hardware cloth and just some just some half-inch staples on the bottom of that just to kind of you know kind of prevent any problems now to keep all the dirt and stuff from out from inside the tubes um, the slits are pretty small and once you get your mix in there it's really not going to move around too much what you don't want is when you're filling it is to fill your tubes up uh, with your potting mix so i just cut these little squares out of some leftover landscape fabric and I just use electrical tape. I mean, you can use duct tape, you can use whatever you want to, but again, you know, economy wise, I only need it to hold that silt on there long enough for me to fill that up because once it's filled up, it's not gonna move around very much. That's kind of what you need. So let's talk about uh, prep work, getting stuff ready to assemble. The uh, the lumber prep work on this doesn't take very long at all, especially if you've got a chop saw set up like this. You can put a stop block on the end of it, you know, measure it 36 inches out, and then you can just, I mean, I, I processed 48 cuts in 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. Once you get set up for production type runs, it, it doesn't take very long at all. Okay, I have my, you can see the little white lines on there. I have it so that 
two and a half inches up from the edge of each board is where I'm going to drill a hole in my angle and then put a screw to attach it with. And the way that I do this quickly is I made a just a little template. I line the top of that foam core template with the top of my angle iron. I just mark it on the edge and then I just use my angle square and then I just make a short line. I don't have to be precise because I have a jig set up on the drill press so that I can put my hole the same distance from the edge. I just need to know where left to right I need to put that hole. Now I don't have to mark on the other side because once I get the holes drilled on one side I flip it up and then I just line my drill bit up with the hole that I just put in and then I'm lined up and it's going to be hidden. No one's ever going to see it. It doesn't really matter, but this is the way that I do it. And just like that, you've got the rest of the legs for the other three beds. We're getting ready for assembly, but let's talk about our wood that we're going to get. Uh, this is Western Red Cedar. It is very rot resistant. The way I get it from my wood store is it's, it's sanded on one face and two edges. So this is smooth, but then on the back side, it's a rougher cut. So when we're going to assemble this side, we're going to put our sanded boards down because we are attaching these on the inside where you're not going to see them. We want to keep the smooth side to the outside so that when Mrs. Rattlecan is doing her gardening duties, um, she is not going to snag her fancy pants. So before we attach these on here, I want to make sure that the ends of this are square. I put my square up against this. It doesn't wiggle at all. It does that on the top as well as the bottom. And then for spacing, I use a board from the short side of things. That way, when we put the sides together and I mount my boards like this, they're going to sit just on the inside of this front board. So all you're gonna see is the front of that. Now again, I'm using number eight panhead screws. This is not the time to be using your high-powered impact driver because it would be super easy to strip this wood out and we do not want to strip our wood out now again we're all big boys and girls you can argue about what type of screw you would want to use one versus the other it doesn't matter to me what you use, as well as it shouldn't matter to you what I use. As long as you can get the job done and hold that in there securely. So we've got this end done. We're gonna go ahead and get the other end done. And so now we're going to put we're going to put our ends on. And what I found to be fairly helpful is to I've got one of these uh, auto adjusting Craig jig clamps, and I'll use that to just steady one of the boards, and then we'll just stack the rest of them on there. And remember, put the smooth side to the outside.
And so now you just take another pre-made panel like you've already done and you flip it on top and you screw it in. And there you go, got a carcass of one built. And then we'll uh, move over to the other station, um, for lack of a better word, that I've got set up. So the, all right, next step, we gotta sand the rough edges off the corners. All right, here's a little trick from the uh, guitar side of the shop. We have this piece that's running along the grain, and then you can see it's gonna splinter. This whole piece wants to splinter off here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flood this with super glue. You see how it shot out of the bottom of that crack there? We're going to flood that with some super glue. And then we're going to clamp it. We're going to clamp it with a, with a tape clamp. Just like that. It won't take terribly long to dry sand over it one last time and with any luck that whole piece will stop from splintering off. Now it's time for the fun stuff. We need to cut a piece of six foot long three foot wide hardware cloth. This stuff is like a herd of angry kittens that will absolutely tear your hands up so just be careful. This box is built to accommodate some cages that are coming. So I have a three foot wide piece of hardware cloth fitting into a three foot and an eighth wide space. So I have a couple of boards set up on the bottom of my planter to support it. And then I will use a piece of wire to just kind of temporarily hang on to it until we get the thing installed. Then I use these big long cutters because I can usually get about five wires per slice and get it done quicker. And then you just hold the things in with some big half inch staples. Now I've got a, got a piece of wire mounted through here. This is just a piece of network cable. And that is just temporarily holding this mesh. Because um, when we flip this upside down, start loading it with our irrigation tube, uh, it's gonna kind of want to sink a little bit. It'll hold it in there, give it just enough tension to hold on to it so that once we get it installed, we can just pull that piece out because this eventually is gonna sit on the ground. Okay, I've decided to come out and show you in this um, in this box that's already installed what we're getting ready to do we're going to cut two end pieces this one is going to have a drain here and then way on the other end on the opposite corner we're going to have one that's going to have a fill tube this stuff um, these two pipes are going to have a, a sock over it for no other reason than I've already, um, uh, these are just leftover pieces and we're doing this just to use up what we have. Then we cut the rest of the tubes to fill the bottom of this and create our water reservoir. And as you can tell, it's a beautiful day in Ohio and everybody's out doing stuff in their shops. So the first piece we're going to cut, there is going to be a tube running the length of this side. So I need to cut this tube this long. Now I need to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to cut through this outer sock 
it doesn't really matter how precise you're going to be on this. You'll see why here in a second. And then what I do is I put the tip of my scissor in there and then cut up to the next hole. So there's my one piece. Now I have to put a piece of landscape fabric over the end of this hole because when we fill this up what we don't want to do is for all of our potting mix to go into here and fill this up because ideally we're gonna when this is full we're gonna have half maybe a little more than half of this tube filled with water then the other half of this or so is going to have air in it and this is it's basically an aeration screen it's going to allow um, the exchange of air uh, with the with the ground uh, we'll be able to get the air and the oxygen up into our root system we don't want this tube filled with water we certainly don't want it filled with mix so now every single one of these tubes on the ends of these i'm going to have to go through and i'm going to have to put i'm going to have to tape that piece of fabric on the end of it and this is probably the most time intensive part of this whole process I have got to get a liner on the inside of this. Uh, we're using four mil vapor barrier. Don't know if that's gonna be heavy enough. Uh, what we want to do is create a, uh, we want to make this um, waterproof. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut a piece 12 feet wide by nine feet long. And then as one piece, I'm gonna put it in there and then I'm gonna fold my corners up as best I can uh, there's a really good chance it's going to be ugly now as you can tell it is men like me the reason the good Lord made gift bags it's done it's kind of ugly on this side because I cut my piece 12 by 12 and uh, didn't realize that till I was probably 75 percent of the way done and trying to wrap things up but that's uh, you kind of get the gist you want it to be one piece and then we'll just take a regular staple gun and we'll staple it around the top. The bottom part, you want to make sure that you're waterproof because you want to be able to retain all that water that you're holding in there. The top two thirds of it, um, you want it to remain waterproof so that you don't have your soil packed up against the back part of your wood. And you want to try to make these, help these things last as long as they can. Now before we get too carried away, let's talk about setting the height of this drain hole. This is going to be, this will be covered in landscape fabric, but we have to figure out where to put the hole in here so our drain tube can extend into this tube, not into the potting soil, but into the actual tube, the water reservoir. And if this is set on the bottom of our, of our planter, if we put this tube, the top of our tube at the four inch mark, I've got no space for air. And I need to have space for air. I have to have that air exchange going on with the soil. So if I put the top of my tube uh, at like two and three quarters, then you can see I've got a goodly amount of air space. You know, maybe if I put it at two and a half inches, maybe that's even better. That's something you're going to have to decide on your own and by experience because again this is an experiment for us. Uh, I'm just using a scrap piece of PVC and uh, I think we'll go for two and three quarter for the top of that tube. We'll just use a Forstner bit, drill a hole. If you've already put the liner in it, be careful that you don't chew through the back end of that liner because I can get ugly real quick. Perfect. All right, uh, in what is so far the nicest part of the day today, here is our four boxes. And they are pretty close to level. Um, the thing that I made sure they were is that they tipped just a skosh towards the front. Um, so uh, that way they would they would kind of default towards uh, the drains. The only thing that I didn't really cover was inside 
of the front wall, I have a rod. It's a four foot piece of steel that goes down into the ground and it's just held on there with a couple of pipe clamps. And that is just so if we get a, a, a whole bunch of pressure on that front wall, we've got something to hold it back so that it doesn't bow out and look horrible. I'm not worried about the back because the backs are pretty close um, to the walls. Some of these, as I said, they're mostly level in one area down here on the end I had to work around um, a sewer rough in for the shop and in this part of Ohio our soil is made out of exactly two materials clay and rocks and some of these I think are on the big side so anyways there is our four beds and what are we going to talk about next next episode we're going to talk about how you fill these up considering they're well you do the math they're 26 inches tall three feet wide six feet long so we're in the 30 plus cubic foot range um, it's not going to be cheap to fill them up, but when we do get them filled up, it'll be an excellent draining, an excellent wicking material, lots of space for water to climb up through, aeration coming in from the bottom as well. Um, we won't be watering these every single day, and uh, hopefully, maybe even this year, We'll get something tasty out of it. In editing this video, I don't think I went over this fill tube in any great depth. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. It is, it's just a piece of PVC and I have cut a slit in the top of one of those end tube pieces and slid it down in there and in this case uh, these I just made sure that tube stayed in there with just a piece of piece of sheet metal screwed into the side <clears throat> I used a slit just because I want to you want to get kind of a tight fit down in there I also have the bottom of that tube cut at an angle um, so that way when uh, if it gets stuffed down onto the bottom, you don't block that hole off. Um, and this one, as we can tell, it's holding water quite nicely. There's evidence of the drain tube being utilized. This one, it's got a hole in it somewhere and we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to take the pipe out take a look see if we can find out where it's leaking from the disadvantage of using four mil and this one's holding water nicely as well so yeah I just wanted to cover that here's a different one it's just nothing fancy and this one is that's got held in there with just a pipe clamp I, I just wanted to make sure trying to trying to head off all the questions before I get this thing edited and posted so anyways I'm James this is Mrs. Rattlecan's house you guys have a good weekend remember if I can do it you can do it cheers if you enjoyed watching this episode of Mrs. Rattlecan's house consider checking out this video be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and to get the latest updates on our progress, like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Absolutely should have some wine. <laughs>